I would be a hopeless journalist because I can't actually do anything exciting. <laughs> it's here. I'm going to have a look. See, before we get started on the fake exhaust, loads of stuff has got fake exhaust now. Testing a 420 brake horsepower rear wheel drive Lexus. Welcome to the Scottish summer. Hi guys, it's Stephen from James Glenn Car Sales, and today you join me in a 2010 Lexus ISF. Lexus introduced the Lexus ISF in 2008, the first gen car, which went down pretty well for the first attempt. Uh, in the performance uh, saloon car arena um, up against some stiff competitions such as the E92, sorry, the E90 M3, RS4 and C63. Producing 420 brake horsepower from a 5 litre V8. Um, it was certainly not lacking in performance, uh, albeit they did have to up the CC slightly from the, from the original base engine to achieve that. Uh, the engine's actually lifted from the big LS460. Then I don't know if it's bored or stroked, but then the capacity's lifted to 5 litres and Lexus involved Yamaha to, to redesign the cylinder head. So uh, it's quite a revy engine, revs to just under 7,000 RPM. For a big engine, it's quite lacklustre below 3,500 3, RPM, which to be honest, actually really suits the car when you're just pootling about going to work, going to the shops, taking the kids to school, etc. However, we chop the gear selector over to manual. The gauge sport, being a Gen 3 car, the sport button's now on the steering wheel, not buried under here, in the bottom half of the dashboard. And immediately you feel the car wouldn't see up on its toes because it's got passive suspension, doesn't do anything with the, the chassis. But it certainly makes the throttle more alert, really wakens it up. But more importantly, it locks the torque converter in the gearbox. Now the gearbox is an 8-speed torque converter, first 8-speed gearbox in the world actually. Slagged at the time by Mr. Clarkson as having too many gears, but now some cars have even got 10 gears, but 8 is now uh, pretty commonplace, you know, you just need to look at the ZF gearbox for, for example. One of the things I really like about the box is it's still a really mechanical feeling change. Um, don't think just quite as mechanical as like the old Artronic uh, gearbox, uh, like a single clutch type change that you'll see back in the video when I've done a, a 599 review. Uh, it's uh, it's punchy, but not just quite as abrupt as that. Interior of the car, yeah, beginning to show the signs of age a bit now. I mean, this design's been out since I think this generation the ISA, IS um, came out back in 2004. So uh, they've done little things to try and. Um, Try and lift it, try and make it a bit more modern. Uh, the ISFs have um, always had this uh, kind of silvery coloured carbon effect inlays. Um, being a Gen 3 car, it's the first one I've actually sat in. They've gave it a, a smoked tint, um, which makes it look a bit more exciting. Steering wheel, it's not overly thick. It's actually quite nice, quick tactile in the hands. Um, but we've also got now, being a Gen 3 car, a centre tackle, which is absolutely lovely. Uh, nice basically dominates the whole binnacle of the car. Um, as I say, rev to seven, and we've also got some shift lights now in place. The ISF ran from uh, 2008, and I think the last uh, cars registered in the UK were 2014, which were, to be fair, probably uh, cars that lay about in dealers um, unregistered, rather than late manufactured cars, because they couldn't sell them. Over the entire production run, I think Lexus UK managed to sell about 217, there thereabouts, uh, which is pretty poor. But if you had 50, 55,000 pounds to spend uh, and you've got all your go-to BMW, Audi, Mercedes, uh, tried and tested marks, and then over in the corner you had Lexus saying, yay, this is our first attempt, but it's the same price probably be forgiven uh, for opting for one of the German uh, one of the German rivals now fast forward 
10, 12 years. And I'm going to just say, I'm going to throw this out there, I'm going to say that a 12 year old ISF is going to be a much, much safer uh, option than any of the other cars, purely down to reliability. Do they offer the precision of an M3? Uh, no, they don't. You can make them pretty good, but they'll never drive just as sharp as an M3. Will it have the unbelievable soundtrack of, a, of an AMG car? Again, you can put exhaust on the ISF. It does make them pretty awesome, but it's never going to be an AMG. Is it going to have the four-wheel drive, all-weather capability of an RS4? No, it's not. But will it start every time you jump in the car and press the start button? Yes. Will it do 32 miles to the gallon on a long run? Yes, it will. Is it one of the rarest cars on the road? Yes, it is. So, personally, I think now in the used car market, the ISF has just got something that the other three definitely don't. And I can speak from experience. I've owned, personally, three of these. I've had a Mesa Red, I've had a Pearl White, and I had an Ultra Blue car three years ago and I had that car for three years and done 35,000 miles in it it comfortably covered the continent with the family then let me go out and have a play in the car myself once we got where we were going I'd done some modifications to it and it turned it into a pretty capable track car so we're going to do a wee pull from a standstill as I say the weather's not great but we'll see how she puts the power down through a, a 255 section back tyre which is in my humble opinion slightly under tired for a car with this power but we'll see how she goes over this rough bit of tarmac. Not bad at all. Going from a cruising speed to hard acceleration once you're above three and a half thousand RPM opens a secondary air intake in the air box in the car and it literally fills the cabin with this pure raw induction noise. It's a bit it's a bit CSL like uh, in the induction stakes, um, but rather than a kind of raspy straight six, we've got a big deep uh, bellowing V8 induction note. So if you find yourself in the market for a performance saloon and you've never considered considered an ISF, do yourself a favour. Google it, YouTube it, watch the videos, and you will be absolutely blown away with just how capable, how reliable, and how much fun uh, these cars can really be. I hope you've thoroughly enjoyed the video. I've thoroughly enjoyed making it. If you'd like to see more, please do give us a, uh, give us a subscribe. If you'd like to find out more about the car, we're on jamesglenn.co.uk. Over in socials, you'll find us over on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok.